Well, Ryan, thanks for joining me here in my somewhat empty benched shop there. See, hey, there's nothing on the wheel. I'm ready to start something else. So if you've been watching my videos in order, then you know I was just working on the signal generator and I've had to set it aside uh, while I acquire a tube for it. So I'm going to move on to the next thing. And uh, wow, now you're going to see why I have a big bench. Did that read in the microphone, didn't I? <laughs> there we go. Wow. Holy smokes. Oh, I gotta catch my breath after lifting that up there. Wow. There's a beast. Dumont. Dumont oscilloscope. What a beast. So I am completely unfamiliar with this, other than it, it's an oscilloscope, so I'm familiar with oscilloscopes. Ah, it's got the info stuck right on it, both sides. Y calibration, <coughs> it's over here. Balance adjustments. Trigger level, X hum. Hmm. Sweep. EXP point. I don't know what that is. Well, I like being out uh, basically uh, beyond the edge of my knowledge. Um, and I'm certainly going to get that experience here. Stigmatism, hum balance, why hum? Hmm, lots of, uh, lots of controls around hum. Here's the, uh, here it is, uh, Alan B. DeMont Labs. Clifton, New Jersey, made in USA. Uh, let's see here. Type 401A, and there's the serial number, 8285. Fuse, hey, first troubleshooting move here. Fuse looks good. I don't think this guy's been plugged in or operated for a long, long time. trouble. <laughs> hey, we're off to a good start here. There we go. Just wasn't pushing it hard enough. Okay. What do you say we uh, pop open these side panels and just take a peek inside before we, uh, we try it out? Yeah, I think we should try this guy out. Imagine, imagine that it's in great shape here. So a friend of mine gave me this. He said he's been lugging it around for too many years. And uh, he thought he might find a better place with me. So I don't know. I've got, all told, five or six oscilloscopes. But uh, I have one really good oscilloscope, and all the rest are kind of so-so. That's coming off. Oh, it's a dirt bag. It's full of dust. Mm. Yeah, it's full of dust. Okay, well, not much to see. I mean, it's all there. I don't have any reason to think there's something seriously wrong. It looks like a water stain in there. Let's take a closer look inside here. Yeah, I 
it really does look like a water stain, doesn't it? Let me adjust the focus on my camera here. see nice and clean like that but on the upper surface all the dust is collected looks real nice here but when you get up above it becomes a uh, dust bunny lots of adjustments here duration, trigger level, X5 calibration. Hmm. And there's an OA2 vacuum tube, OA2. I think that's another voltage regulator tube. What do we see down here? Well, it's very, it's, you know, classic sort of wiring, point-to-point uh, -point wiring. It's not as intimidating as could be all those way up in here in the dark. Yikes. Okay, here's the actual tube here. More adjustments, of course. There's going to be a million adjustments in here. I'd be lucky if I could just get something to come up on the screen and trigger. Let's take a look at the front of this scope here. Y volts. Now off position, then there's an AC side and a DC side. 10.1.1.01 Fairly sensitive. Sweep range. X2. X1. Times 1. Times 2. Times 5. Seconds. External. And over here. Auto drive sweep. Well, I've never heard of that. AC off and then DC, same as the other one. Calibrated position. There's no, no numbers on it. I'm not sure what that is. Position. <clears throat> external sink, internal sink or on the line. Y calibration. I'm not sure what what this is. I don't know if that's supposed to turn or pull off and reveal something. I don't know what that is. Position down here. Balance, Y calibration. Y input, external sink, trigger. Sweep or X cali calibration or something, X CAL. 
set to calibrate marks. X balance. So here's the X input. 55 picofarad. A little high. Here's my more modern scope right here. 20 picofarad. 1 meg 20. This one is 2 meg 55. Trigger output. External sync in and the Y input. This is a very simple scope. There we are, 401, 401A. Oh, power switch, good to know where that is. And scale lighting, I think that's power and scale lighting. Oh, here we go. Focus, intensity. Okay, oh, that's interesting. You got a date here, calibration. Oh, look, it's been calibrated recently, 1976. By, what do you make that to be? Mr. Number 77? And you put his name on there. Now, let's open up this side. See what we got. So what am I going to do with this scope in the long run? I don't know. Um, it might have a noisy fan in it. I mean, I've got a, an excellent oscilloscope on my bench. I have to open a museum. Side here. We're just looking with the close-up camera just to see if there's anything jumping out at me that I would say, boy, I'm glad I saw that. That's the front panel there. No, that's the back panel, actually. That's the back panel. I guess the real question is, if it doesn't work, what am I going to do with it? And I don't think I'm going to do too much. So the purpose right now is just to see what's up with this guy. And uh, um, Clean under here. Well, other than the extensive dust, and you know, there's nothing that I'm seeing that's making me uh, jump up and down. You know, there could be, there could be exactly the kind of tube in here that I need that signal generator. Who knows? We'll find out as we go. Okay, so basically I've seen no reason not to try it out. Since I do have the ability to start this up on restricted power, I'm not too, not too afraid. But I'm willing to bet this has not been plugged in for a long time. Put it in the middle, intensity at the bottom. Um, I wish 
should flip the trigger to line. I can remember where to do that. There we are. So it is set to line. Trigger level in the middle. And uh, wow. Okay. Power is off. Plug is in. Okay, so this meter is showing you the voltage at the end of the plug, plus a couple volts. The meter is, the meter is a little generous. Yeah. Now my, my, this is the line voltage basically coming into my house. You can see it jump there quite a bit. Not sure what goes on here, but stuff goes on. Okay. Can you tell I'm a little nervous turning this on? Suitably nervous. Okay, won't get any less scarier standing here, so just keep an eye on those light bulbs. There we are. that off. Okay, are we ready? Man, that voltage on that meter is just jumping all over the place. Okay. Eyes on the light bulbs. Nothing happened. Nothing at all happened. possible in that instant the uh, the fuse popped in the back the moment I turned it on that's possible uh, <laughs> yeah well it's not coming on switch off really get like that. Oh, I'm going to swing around this way. I'm going to pull everything off my bench here. It's definitely plugged in. Is this, this cord plugged in? Yeah, it goes right in. goes right in. Fuse. Well, I can see the spring is pulled tight on this fuse. Uh, I'm sure it's good. See if my meter agrees here. Sure, it's good. Is that one of a number of fuses? There might be some internal fuses. Give it a go again. Maybe, maybe the fuse didn't connect in the fuse holder, which is highly unlikely. But uh, I don't know what else to guess here. Okay, back on the lights. Switches off. Okay, light bulbs are in the circuit. Here we go. You're ready for something different this time. Huh. <laughs> you, you never know. Just never know. Okay, so those are not fully bright, but they're pretty bright. Pretty bright. Two light bulbs are pretty bright. I keep saying that, Jim. So there's quite a bit of power being drawn by this machine. Uh, that's not too surprising, really. Okay, a little neon light has come on inside it. Let's take a little look around here. So there's that neon light has come on. And this one has come on. So there's some voltage getting through. Yeah, the, uh, the Dumont here is actually lit up. Huh. Now, I don't see any smoke. I don't hear anything bad. There's another neon light up in there. A couple more up in there. 
those are probably being used as voltage regulators, very much like the... Uh oh, what happened there? I don't know if you could see that, but my, uh, for a moment the, lights, the light went off on, on the uh, supply. So I think what happened there, I think the plug is weak. It's just the plug in the outlet is, is really weak. I think that's where the problems are coming from. As I rotate this, I'm kind of monkeying around with the plug here. Yeah, that's all it is. Just how oh, this is black. I can hear it sparking away in there. Okay, let's, let's swing it a little further. Ah. Yeah, less than 100 volts supplied to this. Uh, it's a little low, but it might be enough still to see something on the screen. Let's check it out here. First of all, scale lighting. I don't think there's any scale light. Okay, intensity. Now, the beam could, could be going across, but it might be going across off the face of the bulb. Is intensity up, up, up. That's full intensity. Now, we'll move it around X and Y position here. We're looking for anything, a dot, a line, anything. Okay, so we're not seeing anything at all. So chances are it's because it's only being fed 100 volts. Okay, I'm also listening to it in here and I'm waiting for it to smell of smoke. Nothing is happening at all. There's no sounds coming out of it. just being very quiet at the moment, that's all. The mi microphone, uh, you can actually see it right here. I mean, it's just right above the, right above the machine. So you can hear it too if it were to start snapping or clicking. Or fizzing. Oh, 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 don't do that. Okay, so when I'm debating in my head, not saying anything, is should I put it on full power? Don't see why not. It's got a fuse in it. Uh, it's operating fine at 100, just under 100. So we turn the intensity down, and we'll give it the full, the full treatment. Here we are, full treatment. Oh, the Dumont really lit up now. Oh, what I hear. nothing okay so apparently we're feeding this now 120 volts or so I'll turn up the intensity and watch the screen here oh, 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 oh. I saw something I saw something look at that there it is uh, X position a little dirty control by position. Look at that, eh? They put these two controls in their center position. The dot is still on the screen. That's pretty good after all these years. I think maybe these adjustments are so far off. Not bad. Now, how come it's because how come it's not out like that? Doesn't appear to be sweeping properly. Sweep range. Dirty, dirty controls. Lots of weird stuff happening there. Okay, let's leave it like that. It's sweeping now. Okay, it's, it's a nice, sharp, clean line. It's really quite nice. Let's give it a little more intensity. Oh, don't like that. What's going on there?
fuck it, just, it just you know, no expectation that anything like that would ever happen. It's like it gets smaller when I do that. Yeah. So now this is not grounded. Um, it's a three-prong plug into a two-prong extension cord there. And even if the ground wire were available, my shop is ungrounded. I'm, I'm floating on an iso isolation transformer. Well, that's a real shocker to me. Uh, let's put a little, the fact that this works, let me put a little input into it here. Yeah, so apparently that was a little too much input. Hey, where'd it go entirely? All I did was touch it with the end of my screwdriver, put my finger on it, to put a bit of a hum signal into the Y input. Why? Why? Why did I do that? Why? Maybe it stopped triggering. Ooh. Okay. Can you see the general glow? Like that? That usually means the beam is way off to the side and striking the side of the tube and then uh, splashing onto the screen. So the electrons are striking the screen everywhere. So uh, that's usually means the X or the Y position is way off. Oh my gosh. Okay. Now it's no longer sweeping again. Well, the basic, the basic bottom line with this guy is it works. Uh, oh, let's try a little Y input again. How about a little X input? Uh, it's got some problems with it. Just probably dirt on many of these controls, and when you whack the machine, uh, it, it just cause variations in the dirty contacts and you get all kinds of weird results. That's why it's amazing that this is working at all. It really is amazing. So, what to do? What to do? What to do with this big old scope? I don't know. Maybe go away and think about it for a while. Um, I, I'm not sure I can really get any valuable use out of it, but it's quite a good looking instrument. If it were cleaned up, it would look great. Uh, you know, it's in generally a pretty good condition. Huh. Maybe I can just find that voltage regulator tube inside there and steal it. So anyway, that's it, uh, that's it for here, I think. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to stop at this point here. So thanks for watching, and I will ponder whether I should lift my other great big honking scope up here and do the same thing. See what it does. Now to the sound of my cat, we'll see you.